In this video, I'm going to offer some tips on how to take care of your kendo bogu. Even an entry-level machine-stitched bogu set can be quite expensive, let alone a hand-stitched set, so it's worth taking care of your investment. There are some simple things you can do to keep your bogu in good condition. The most important is to let it dry as much as possible in between practices. Of the four parts of your bogu, the one that gets the most wear and tear by far is your kote, so it pays to give it some attention if you want to extend its life as much as possible. After keiko, I spray the inside of the kote with rubbing alcohol, also known as isopropyl alcohol. It really helps to cut down on the odor. You know your kote has become a biohazard when the smell is more powerful than your waza. Many years ago, I tried using Febreze, which for those of you outside of the United States, is a fabric deodorizer. But after a while, I felt it was leaving a residue, making the palm leather feel a bit gummy. So I switched over to rubbing alcohol and I haven't looked back. The good thing about alcohol is that it actually kills the bacteria that causes the odor, rather than just dealing with the smell. You can get rubbing alcohol at pretty much any drugstore. I use the 91% version since it has less water content than the 70% version. I don't know if it makes a huge difference, but I figured there's no point in putting additional moisture onto bogu that's already damp. I dumped the alcohol into a spray bottle but you can also find it sold in spray bottle dispensers. Lately, I've been adding a few drops of tea tree oil to the alcohol. Tea tree oil is a natural antimicrobial with the added benefit that it smells good. It's a tip I learned from Western fencers who have the same problem as kendo practitioners in that they can't easily wash some parts of their equipment. I've heard that the traditional mixture among fencers is tea tree oil added to vodka which is basically ethyl alcohol instead of isopropyl alcohol. It's a good idea to rotate occasionally between two different sets of kote. This is probably the most important thing you can do to prolong their life. Not only does this allow one set to dry out completely, but it also allows you to make minor repairs before they turn into major reconstruction projects. If you don't have easy access to a kendo equipment store, then your next best option is to befriend your neighborhood shoe cobbler. He can make minor patches like this, before you have to get the entire palm replaced, which can get pretty expensive. It really pays to take care of those holes as soon as they appear. Once the holes get anywhere near as big as a penny, they'll quickly spiral out of control. As for cleaning the kote, I've washed them in a front-loading washing machine in cold water without any problems. I add a tiny amount of detergent, less than a teaspoon. It's there just to break the surface tension of water so it can seep into the material better. Too much detergent can actually degrade the leather. I wash the kote with a small amount of other dark laundry. This seems to help the agitation a little bit, and it also balances out the drum if you decide to use the spin cycle. Just be aware that a lot of blue dye will bleed out of the kote, especially if you're washing them for the first time. So make sure your next load of laundry isn't a batch of light colors, otherwise you may get a little surprise that looks like blue tie-dye. This will definitely not make you popular in your house. I haven't tried washing kote in a top-loading machine, so if someone out there wants to experiment with an expendable pair, I'd be interested to know how it turns out. I'm a bit wary of it myself because it basically seems like swishing them around in a bucket of water. As for drying the kote after you wash them, first let them drip dry and then, when they're damp, crumple some newspaper into them. This will help them dry out, and remember to dry your kote in the shade and not in direct sunlight. You can wash your men if something catastrophic happens to it, such as leaving it damp in a bogu bag for a long time. I'll put a link in the description below to a video about how to wash your men. But generally speaking, if you let your men dry out as much as possible in between practices, then you shouldn't really need to wash it. After each keiko, I spray rubbing alcohol where the chin and forehead contact the men and also on the mendare where they touch the shoulders. 
If you happen to get salt stains on the mendare or menbudong, then you can use a damp towel to wipe it down and then let it dry. Also, it's a good idea to expose the men to direct sunlight a couple of times a year to sterilize it. Just make sure it's the inside that's exposed to sunlight and not the outside, since that will fade the fabric. The main thing to keep in mind with your tare is to keep the himo flat. You can do that in a couple of different ways. One way is to wrap it around the side flaps like this. And another way is to wrap it around the center flap. Again, the key is to keep the himo as flat as possible in between practices. If you have a bamboo tour, then you may find that it expands and contracts depending on the time of year due to changes in humidity. If the opening gets too small, then you may need to prop it open when you store it. And conversely, if the opening keeps getting wider, then you may need to keep it tied up with the tour himo, like this. A decent poguse can last many years with some simple care. You'll probably get an itch to upgrade to a nicer set before your pogu fails on you, possibly with the exception of the kote. And if you do upgrade to a nicer set, you can always keep your old set as a backup or you can donate it to a deserving kohai. And if you have any other suggestions on how to clean your pogu, please add them to the comments below.